All right, now we're going to take a look at another video here for using the midpoint and distance formulas. And this time we're going to look at the midpoint formula in the Cartesian plane to help us find the other endpoint. Now, when we take a look at this kind of problem, this is the type of problem that is going to drive some people crazy, but really, you're going to think about it. I'm going to teach you guys to think about it. Now, I've got a midpoint that I'm given, and they give us the coordinates for it. And in this case, they tell us the coordinates are at 1, 2. So I'm going to go and ahead and plot that midpoint and then that one endpoint that they do give me has a coordinates of 4 1 so I'm gonna plot that point in this case point X I'm gonna go ahead and plot point X and I'm gonna plot my midpoint now if we take a look at this from a common sense perspective X is over on the right hand side of my midpoint so if M is in the middle that means my other endpoint has got to be somewhere over in this region because otherwise M wouldn't be the midpoint. If I took a look over here, then X would be the one in the middle and not M. So we've got to make sure just from a common sense perspective, we look in the right area. Now, what I'm going to do is take a look at just the slope. So when we take a look at this from a slope perspective, we just have to make sure we count correctly. Now I'm going to go up one and to the left one to three units. So the slope from x to m is negative one over three. Now I'm going to go up again and I'm going to go one, two, three this time. And when I finally land, I'm going to land over at this location right here. That spot, that is what I'm thinking are, is going to be my other endpoint y. And that spot have the coordinates. My other endpoint y has the coordinates negative two three so that's the coordinates I come up with from my other end point y from a graphical perspective take a look at this from an algebraic perspective I'm going to take my midpoint formula and I'm going to split it into two separate pieces one dealing with my x coordinates and one dealing with my y coordinates now when I have each one of those pieces I already know the coordinates for the point that I'm given the point x so I'm going to substitute 4 in for x1 and 1 in for y1. Now the only other thing that I have to do is take a look at my midpoint that I'm given. And I'm going to substitute 1 for the side that deals with the x-coordinate. And then I'm going to substitute 2 for the side that deals with the y-coordinate. Once you take a look at that, now all we have to do is make sure that we do our arithmetic correctly. So on the left side when I'm working with my x-coordinate, when I multiply both sides by 2, I get 2 equals 4 plus x2. Now when you subtract 4 on both sides, you will need to make sure that you get 2 for your second x-coordinate. Now when I go to work and find the coordinates for my y2, multiply both sides by 2, so you end up with 4 equals 1 plus y2 subtracting one you end up with three now I've got to put both of those together and write my coordinate pair now you've got to make sure you take your time and write your coordinate pair correctly when you solve it algebraically so the negative two is your x coordinate that comes first three is the y coordinate that comes second now the coordinates for my other endpoint were y so I have to make sure that I have that labeled now what I want to do is take a look at algebraically the value of the point that I came up with. I came up with the point negative 2, 3. Now when I take a look at that and compare that graphically, I want to make sure that they came up with the same coordinates. Negative 2, 3 is what I got graphically, and negative 2, 3 is what I got algebraically. So since I got both answers to be the same, I did this problem correctly. Now if you understood this, go ahead and pause the video try example B. If you didn't understand it or you want to go through one more example, let's go ahead and get after example B. Now for example B we've got the midpoint of JK being midpoint M63 and one endpoint that we're given is 42. Find the coordinates of endpoint K. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this graphically first by plotting both of those points. Now based on where point J is and where my midpoint M is, I know that my other endpoint K has got to be somewhere over on the right hand side of my midpoint M. So what I'm going to do is simply move using slopes. So from point J I'm going to go up 
one, and to the right, two. And for my midpoint, I'm going to follow that same pattern. I'm going to go up one, to the right, two, and I'm going to go ahead and put a dot. So graphically, I'm coming up with the point K being at the coordinates 8, 4. So that's what I come up with from a graphical perspective. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this from an algebraic perspective. And again, we're going to approach this the same way that we did before, simply using substitution to help us solve this problem. Now what I want to make sure is that I take my values for x1 and I substitute that in correctly. I take my midpoint x coordinate, substitute that in correctly as well as taking my y-coordinate and substituting that in correctly with my y-coordinate from my midpoint and substituting that in correctly. Once I've done made all those substitutions correctly, again, now it's just going to be arithmetic. So I'll have 12 equals 4 plus x2. When I solve for x2, I'll get 8 for my second x-coordinate multiplying both sides by 2 for the y coordinate I'll come up with 6 equals 2 plus y2 and then we end up with 4 for my other y coordinate now when I put those together I end up with the point 8 4 for my other end point k and I want to double check to make sure that that's what I came up with algebraically and graphically I want to compare both of those and if I look at the coordinates that I came up with on the graph, 8, 4, that's the same thing that I came up with algebraically. So that's all there is to finding the other endpoint if you're given the midpoint and one of the endpoints.